afternoon in New York and in Brazil. Good morning in Arizona and Mexico. Good night in Europe. And welcome whatever time of day or night it is for those joining us from the rest of the world. I'm Yael Danieli, founder and executive director of the International Center for the Study, Prevention and Treatment of Multigenerational Legacies of Trauma, ICMGLT for short. Thank you for joining our webinar today. Held in anticipation of the 22nd session of the International Forum on Indigenous Peoples Issues that will be held in New York, UN New York from the 17th to 28th April, 2023. This International Center for Multigenerational Legacies of Trauma webinar recognizes that the arts are both central to indigenous people's identities and integral to their authentic expression. Indigenous artists from the Americas will question whether even referring to their work as art in its Western connotations conveys is its authentic meaning, will discuss the meanings of their own visual creations as conveying their multi-generational traumas and resilience, their role in maintaining and promoting indigenous traditional cultures, activism, and enhancing healing and well being. This webinar would not have happened if it were not for the generosity and dedication of Dr. Mary Fabry, ICMGLT's advisory council member and co chair of its working group on Indigenous Peoples' Issues, and Professor Fernanda Frizo Bragato and Mr. Andre Laperriere, working group members, as well as advisory council and the board, respectively. Your moderator, I, am a clinical psychologist, victimologist, traumatologist, and psychohistorian. I devoted much of my career to studying treating and preventing multi-generational impacts of massive trauma, to victims' rights, to reparative justice, and to articulating history as it is lived rather than as it is written about only. Our first presenter is Dayara Hori Figur Figueroa Sampaio Duhigo of the Tucano indigenous people, Yepa Masa Eremiri Husiro Paramari clan of the upper Rio Negro of the Brazilian Amazon. Hayara was born in Sao Paulo and lives in Brasilia, the if an artist, activist, educator, and communicator, having earned a degree in visual arts and a master's in human rights from the University of Brasilia, UNB. She researches the right to memory and truth of indigenous people. Coordinator of Radio Yan Yande, the first indigenous web radio in Brazil from 2015 to 2021. Dayara won the 2021 PIPA Online Award. Our second speaker is Nicolas de Jesus, born on 6 September 1960. Nicolas is an artist from the Nahua region of Guerrero, Mexico. 
His work carries themes of Mexican rural life, as well as politics and world events. The celebration of Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, is a common subject in his art as well. Third will be Red Wing Ted Ness. Born in 1960 and raised on the Navajo Reservation in Northern Arizona, Red Wing trained as a traditional sand painter with his paternal grandfather and later attended the University of Northern Arizona. Red Wing is an artist with a wide range of skills that include traditional painting, murals, and illustrations. He's also a conservationist and a sometime actor. Last but not least is Oi Sokun Lahache, who presents the following. She wrote to us, Intergenerational trauma plagued my childhood, stifled my gifts, and kept me down until I found indigenous healers to help guide me through my healing processes to be free, to own my space, to create art to honor the ties I have to my ancestors. I share my Iroqua history and culture through various art mediums and to express the pride I choose to carry and share being indigenous. We have an hour and a half for the webinar, probably an hour 45 minutes. Each speaker will talk for about 10 minutes Following an interchange among us, I will open the floor to questions or brief comments from the virtual audience. Panelists will then conclude with last words. Please use the chat function and we'll do our best to respond to as many as we can. Feel free to direct your question to a particular panelist or to the full panel. I now give the screen floor to Dayara Hori Figueroa Sampaio Duhigo. Dayara, the floor is yours. Thank you, Yael. Uh, are you hearing me? Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Anuti Masan. É, Yuni do Rigó, e é I'm saying hello to everybody. Uh, my name is do Rigó. This is my traditional name, uh, my indigenous name. I am from the Tucano indigenous peoples. Uh, we live in the border between Brazil, Colombia, and Venezuela. That is quite in the center of what is left of the Amazon rainforest. And um, I thank you very much for the opportunity of being here with you today. Um, I'm an artist, so Yael asked me to, to share <laughs> some of my art. Um, I try to share right now. Are you seeing it? Can you, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. It looks great. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I, I made this presentation yesterday, so I'm going to show a little bit of my last work. Um, I was born in Sao Paulo. Uh, I, am, I wasn't born in my territory, but Sao Paulo is, um, well, it's a big city where uh, began uh, the gatherings, the, the great gatherings of indigenous leaders to the building of the uh, constitutional project uh, that finally get us uh, 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 civilian rights, because in Brazil until 79, we were considered as incapable unca people, as children. Uh, so uh, in Brazil, we were like the um, last uh, part of society that uh, 
when to have full civilian rights. And until today, uh, we have very little access to everything. Uh, we are the last group to access um, uh, superior education in universities. We are really uh, very little represented in the medias and arts as well. So I've been part of a generation of uh, indigenous that had taken place and called ourselves uh, as artists in face of uh, a very complex um, uh, system of art institutions, uh, either if they are university, museums, galleries, or the, the city itself. So. Uh, I'm gonna see, I don't know how I advance. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is one of my last paintings. And um, well, um, in, in, our, in our people, in our nation, there is not such a word for art as it is in the Western uh, thinking. Um, but uh, we tell the story of the Hori. Hori for us is the, the, like the visions of ayahuasca, the, the, the visions of the medicines, the visions of the dreams. And actually it was a moment uh, where the Hori was born. Uh, that was the first time when the medicine was born and it was, um, mm, I'm thinking too much in Portuguese. Maybe I need some translation, so I'll be talking in, in Spanish and see if Nicholas can help me. Como no, se dice right. parto? Your English <laughs> is perfect. Parto. Parto. Ah, parto de alumbramiento de niño? Sí, uh -huh. Parto, parto. It was parto. like the, 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 the medicine of the ayahuasca was born from the womb of uh, an ancestral kind of a goddess. And um, it is a very be beautiful moment because actually the, those first two women that existed, they, they didn't even had like vaginas and they never, it, it, it was never a pregnancy in the history of humankind because it was like the, the beginning of the history of humanity. And so those first women, um, they, Eight, they took the, the medicines of the, they, they smoked the tobacco and they ate uh, the, the mambe, the, the padu, that is the, the coca leaf powder, and they get pregnant. And uh, the first beings that were born, uh, the first of them was um, the one that we, we call the master of the flutes, uh, that is a very enchanted being with. Um, eyes of thunder and hairs of fire and, and well, really, really bright. And the second one was um, the, the capi, that is the medicine of ayahuasca. It was a little children uh, made of, of uh, vine. Um, in the, but before it was born, um, the first uh, beings that came out of uh, the middle of the legs of this woman uh, were the brightest and colorful birds. And so everybody in the forest was, wow, that's so beautiful. Like big red macaws and blue macaws and yellow macaws and uh, all those fantastic birds um, flying and, and singing. And it was uh, beautiful. And everybody was like enchanted with that. And then after the birds were born, the most poisonous serpents as the coral serpent and all the, 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 the most poisonous serpent of the, of the Amazonian forest. So everybody was really, really frightened and ah, oh, help. And uh, they, they, were, uh, they thought they, are, they, they are, were going to die even if nobody died at that moment, but they, they were really frightened. And, and after that um, came to life this, uh, this child, uh, this baby made of vines, uh, the ayahuasca vines. And when he was born, uh, the mother took the child in, in her arms and began uh, painting uh, the baby. Huh. And when he pa uh, she painted the baby, all the animals of the forest and the first man began having visions. And so it is the, 
the birth uh, of the Hori, the birth of the vision, the birth of the art. And I like very much this story because art is just like that. Art is enchantment, art is uh, the fears, the, the, the feelings, the expressions of what we are as human beings. And so this painting uh, is named Kartiriwi, that means the house of life. And um, so I believe art is just like that. <laughs> and um, I don't have any, um, como se dice apego? Porque yo no soy apegada. Es como dependencia, algo como attached. I, I, I am not that much much attached to yeah to to any techniques uh, i just uh, uh, kind of um, plunged into uh, the seas of meanings of what can hori be and hori the visions is not is not art because it's not the representation of something hori is not the product made by an artist uh, there is not such a the idea of an artist in our culture as well so i don't consider myself uh, an artist as a white people can call me artist but i prefer to consider myself as a horist if the case because it would art is not enough for us um but we are a, a nation that paints everything around uh, for millennials so in our regions um the in, at the borders of the river in the waterfalls, uh, we have very ancient paintings in the stones, and we paint our houses, and we have these graphisms um, that every every each one of them has a very deep meaning. But all the meanings are just understandable when we plunge into the stories of creation uh, of our nation. So uh, to to understand the the potence of um, uh, of our art, uh, we really need to be connected to our cosmovisions and believe in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Believe in the idea that our visions, for example, are not just static. Uh, they are always in movement as well as is our thinking, as well as is uh, our spirit, as well as is the river, as well as, well as is the world. Um, Right. So uh, I have this, uh, I'll go back this, uh, a series of paintings that are all, every one of them are called Hori because uh, I couldn't give them a, a specific name. They are just visions. And uh, each one that sees that vision can uh, have uh, it, its own impressions and thinkings about that. And, we also are known as the peoples of the uh, serpent canoe of transformation. Uh, that is how we came to this wood from the spiritual wood. Uh, and we came uh, navigating. We didn't came walking. We just um, uh, sail uh, until arriving at the, at, in the Amazon river. And then we climb up uh, until um, Ecuador and Colombia. And so we have a very uh, defined uh, knowledge of all the territory that we have occupied by millennials. And uh, every uh, um, sacred point in this project is marked uh, in the stone with this really ancient drawing. So uh, this, um, uh, images that are also uh, present in the paintings I do because I have been uh, to these sacred places and um, uh, it's very special for me and it's something that is not quite uh, recognized by the society around us. Um, this is um, this is a painting that I made here in Brasilia for the first January. Uh, that was a really special moment because we just changed our government and we went through a very difficult uh, political 
moment during the the government of uh, Bolsonaro that uh, was a president that um, attacked a lot uh, the indigenous rights and um, this painting is called uh, the fall of the sky and the mother of all fights uh, the fall of the sky is um, is uh, an idea uh, that came from the Yanomami people that says uh, that when we hurt uh, Mother Earth and when we get the, the body of the Earth ill, the, the sky that she holds may fall down. So uh, I went um, as uh, we all as indigenous, I think uh, some a point that uh, is really um, uh, constitutional for our identity is the grief by itself. We are people that have centuries of griefs and that live in constant grief. And uh, the pandemics of COVID-19 was really, really strong. I uh, lost my grandfather and, and lots of grand uncles and grandfathers. I also lost my, my husband. And um, so I spent like uh, more than a year uh, without being able to paint. And uh, uh, when I received this uh, invitation to do this, um, this painting, uh, I decided to, to remember uh, the strength of uh, the legacy of the indigenous movement. So here in Brazil, we are living in a moment where that is really special because the indigenous women are really taking uh, their uh, very important places. And the, the women movement say that uh, the mother is, the earth is the mother uh, of all fights. Uh, that everything we do is because, um, we are doing because of the love we have for this great spirit that is our mother, that is our territory, that is our culture, that is our memory. And so uh, is this sacred strength that uh, help us to hold on and, and keep going. Uh, it was really special to have this uh, new president because it was also the first time where indigenous artists were uh, like uh, nationally recognized. Uh, so uh, this is a photo uh, of the National Congress where they projected uh, some uh, this painting of mine and other paintings of other indigenous artists that it was something like we, we never could imagine something like that because uh, we live in a society that is, that is so racist and so ex excludent and but it, it, this was really historic it was really important uh, and then I, i'm showing a little more quicker because uh you know indigenous speak too much and we have very little time um this is written like uh, let's fight and let's go to the east. I, I don't know how to say uh, how do you say the plantation let's go let's go walk in the plantation uh, look in the chat fernanda is helping you with with uh, so i don't know if i have this full abilities of oh, seeing okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but, no, but i think you to... understood you're like, right uh, i tell they are i go ahead fernanda okay what is okay. it we are looking for? They are. Like, yeah, let's go to the plantation. We, we, what we really need to to do today is uh, seed uh, the good um, food uh, for the next generations. Is uh, replant the forest. Mm -hmm. re, uh, is uh, take care of uh, that one that has always uh, given us everything that is the, the mother earth. So uh, let's go and walk. Uh, let's move and work. Mm -hmm. um, this is another uh, mural that I made at the Memorial of the Indigenous Peoples here in Brasilia. Mm -hmm. uh, also says hold up the sky. It's like we need to hold the sky, <laughs> uh, and the way that we uh, how we do it is uh, spiritually. Um, this is a painting that is uh, called Redemption. Uh, is obviously is a jaguar healing a priest. Uh, because, you know, uh, in the Amazon, uh, in our region, we also went to the boarding school um, 
genocide uh, that was protagonized by the Catholic in the uh, church. And um, um, it happened in the middle of the rubber exploitation. It was the, the moment uh, where our villages were under the assault of this uh, model of capitalism and uh, slavery and also the the uh, obligation of learning this west this foreign language that is portuguese and uh, uh, being to, uh, taught as uh, the the white people wanted us to be so uh, i um, I wrote in this little Bible here that the only part that I like really much of the Bible is that, that one that says that even if I, sp I spoke the, the, the language of the angels and had all the knowledges and all the richness, if I don't have love, I am nothing. And um, I think that is really universal, I believe. Uh, in this potence and I and I believe that is necessary also to to get away like to die several times being alive in this at the same um I, I've been exploiting also laser lights and other kinds of uh, uh, intervention interventions in the in the in the city in this case it was in an indigenous house it was really beautiful in the in the smoke of the, the fire um I've also um, I participated in the last Biennale of Sao Paulo that is like kind of the most important Biennale in South America and um it was the first time I had the opportunity of doing like uh art that big because I don't have little uh, really space at home uh, but uh, like uh, being part of, in this Biennale they, they gave me the space to to have these walks uh, done and I decided to to uh, celebrate uh, the ancient uh, oof, feather works yes like, okay uh, that uh, were once done in our territory but of course disappeared because of colonization and uh, of the extinctions of the birds so these are these are synthetic feathers uh, but i managed to to do, do four works of feathers and inside of them uh, four paintings of uh, four really special birds so uh, this is like the coke of the macaw and inside in the other in the, uh, the other side of this is the painting of the macaw that is a, that is a great bird uh, that um, taught us to sing and that brings color and joy and um wow. there, and I made also uh, this uh, feather cloak that uh, is um, inspired by the ancient uh, Tupinamba feather cloaks that are the most ancient objects that, uh, indigenous objects that, that exist, but uh, that are actually in European museums because they were taken uh, by the 1500s. They were stolen and uh, <laughs> in the last, um, uh, 500 years they they just massacred our our, our peoples and so uh, we have not uh, that kind of, of uh, sacred clothing in our territory uh, but um, uh, throughout we are having this experience of retaking this uh, dialogue with these uh, items again and this is actually called Kahtiri Euro that means the mirror of life and so I put this little mirror that is a garage garage mirror you know that that, that one that is in the corner of the shop uh, that is not just a mirror when where you look to yourself uh, uh, you, you you see yourself very little uh, you see your reflection uh, being really tiny and it, and it actually uh, allows you to see the world around you. Like uh, is to say, to tell people, hey, we are just really tiny and the world is quite bigger than, than we imagine. Uh, just playing with this idea of the mirrors they gave us uh, in present <laughs> when they arrived, that is uh, this really, um, Mm, yeah, this is like a caricature, this historical caricature of the Spaniards or the Portuguese uh, changing uh, mirrors with the indigenous. Uh, so it's just giving the mirror back. Um, 
I've ha I had also the opportunity of uh, doing some um, mural paintings. This actually uh, is in uh, the city of Belo Horizonte, that is the capital of the state of Minas Gerais, um, and is also the the is the I, I, let me think in Portuguese a little quick. Selva Mãe do Menino Rio is the mother, mother jungle, mother of the river boy, because uh, at that place they killed a they killed a river, they killed a great river that is called the Sweet River, Rio Doce, and uh, when they killed the river, it was such a crime uh, that uh, many people get in. in uh, well, and, and uh, for for the Kranak people, for the people of that the, that region, that river was is their grandfather. So is as uh, it was like they killed the grandfather of se of several nations, and my grandfather uh, was uh, one hundred ten years old, and he was uh, ready to to die. And I was uh, I just uh, took a moment imagining the the childhood of my grandfather that is uh, so different from mine because my I was born in Sao Paulo my, but my grandfather was bo born in, uh, in the in the most uh, far away in the river and he had this the right to the childhood of these children that are plunging in the river every day and playing and being free and that is our um, our childhood dream and uh, uh, the 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 most uh, that that we have lost uh, in this process of uh, of um, uh, colonization. So uh, and these children, uh, this the children river has a mother because all the rivers only are born in the forest. And so this relation of the the love of the mother and the child is something that we need to to cultivate in society. And uh, they invited me to paint, paint this building that is like uh, 15 floors. Uh, is actually the biggest painting that was done by an indigenous person. And I didn't even knew about that, but uh, it has been received with uh, lots of love by the community. And I believe like, um, um, street art and and these uh, these city interventions are really important to 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 dialogue with with society and i also had the opportunity of of in this other building that is a a, a a tinier from the other like this is like uh, 10 floors only but uh, it's called I aliento i don't know how to translate and that I'm but Fernanda, what aliento? Uh, alento. It's like you, you know, when you take your baby, you say, don't you calm oh, down yeah, and yeah. sing. <laughs> uh, it's just uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. We understand. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and it's in the middle of the one of the richest. Um, places in Sao Paulo, but uh, actually rich people are the, the, the ones that are more ignorant about the indigenous peoples and indigenous realities. So uh, actually it was really well, well welcomed <laughs> and uh, I'm happy about that. I think uh, that is what I can do to, to um, invite uh, my generation to, to celebrate um, uh, our story and who we are. This is the the uh, my father's front house that I painted, um, so I put the, our traditional benches and staffs and instruments and medicines <laughs> and and uh, we painted a house uh, as that. Uh, my nephews and my son could be. Uh, familiarized uh, with our instruments, even living in the city. And so... Um, Thank you, Dayara, I would like That's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and your grandfather is the one who gave you the name Hori. And yeah. The, and decided <laughs> that you would be an artist. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, we never choose our names. We they, they we just come down and are received like that. 
So we have a very, um, I had always a, 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 a very intense relation with Hari, with art, and um, my and other name, that Diara means my friend. So I try to be in friends with the visions. And that Thank is you. what Thank I have to share. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Dear. It was brilliant. And not only did we see art, we learned a lot of history and wisdom, which I'm sure we will keep learning. Thank you. And we will reopen the dialogue. So whatever else you, you want to say, you'll have a chance. Nicholas, please, we... we yeah. We are moving Hello. from Bra we are moving from Brazil to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, all right. Yes, we hear you. Okay. Uh, well, you know my my English is not too good, but I decided to read a text. All right. Of course, of course. Okay. <laughs> Whatever helps. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, travelers and common companion in this temporary existence, while observing what surrounds me, be it a tiny living being or seemingly inanimate object, just by meditating a little, I cannot conclude that what exists is a changed circumstance. This is my answer. Why art is a sublime interpretation of that energy and spiritual existence. Our ancestors knew that. They lay let they themselves, themselves be guided on this path of life and explore the inner self connected to the cosmos. That is why they look at with respect on every manifestation in nature, a teaching that we currently preserve as a cultural treasure that we inherit, inherited with love. We often say that we want a better world for future generations. There is not a world as wonderful as our, as our mother earth that allow us to live in common harmony. Only if there is the will to recognize this reality, I will not proceed with my own experience of heaven emerged as a seed that was fertilized in an, in an indigenous village. Where I naturally received the spark of creativity that through art allows its expression and this is nourished by consciousness and reflection through the culture of my ancestors. I remember very well when my father watched me trying to make my first strokes on the paper amate or amat, as it is called in Nahuatl, an authentic heritage of the pre-Hispanic painter, our ancestors. My father was surprised, says, surprised by, by my interest and the skills I acquired in a short time. I remember as well that my mother, also a potter and painter, had mentioned it, mentioned it, it to, to me when my father commented. It seems that Nico paints better than me. So I think that that's why in, in those early years, I realized that this creative work allowed me to express, to, to express my feeling. At that time, I had already found the taste of the light myself in a world of freedom where I felt no limits to my Im imagination. I understood better its role with art to being to feel those curses, curses in the soul. And that energy will always, always attack, attract you. The fire is lit. It will call you and will not leave 
you alone without the adventure of exploring your feelings and reflection, joys, anxieties, and depressions that sometimes try to betray and sicken the spirit. I became convinced that art liberates us and thus we cry out our pain for injustices based on ordinance that are alien, alien to us and that have been imposed on us for centuries. It is difficult to talk about traumas as part because the aggression has not stopped. The deadly wounds, wounds that persist are caused by multinational companies with mining and hydroelectric projects in our region, continue damaging the ecosystem and ourselves. They continue to destroy the mountains, plundering them of the resources for the benefit of those who are on the lookout for profits in the stock, mar stock market and in the inter international fin financial speculation of the world's top elites. However, this does not end there. Current currently, the panorama facing our people is even more complicated. Because in, a, in, a, in addition to all this, there is a terrible scourge for drugs of drug trafficking and organized crime that places extreme risks on the defenders of people's rights and returns the right to live in peace and harmony in our region. In these circumstances, I reflected that I have come a long way in life. And I ask myself, what is this that has allowed you to continue with this impulse of rebellion? Mm -hmm. I understand that in acquiring consciousness, one suffer when looking at the injustices and afflict humanity that live, lives in the wake suffering in sickness and death in the most vulnerable. One has to take one has to take responsibility. It is a very personal decision according to one's conscience to remain in the satisfaction of personal desires mm -hmm. or to risk raising our voice through art, accompanying people who fight for justice and equality and for the dignities of our people, for the freedom of political prisoners and those assassinated and disappeared by the insensitive and inhuman system. When I felt or feel distressed, I look to the sky. I feel that I'm not alone. My ancestors are with me and have always been on my path in this life. They have accompanied me in the day of the dead celebration dedicated to their memory. They are present to guide, guide us and bring good tools into action every step of the, of the way. We play and love, flattering them with the music of their preference that they like it in this early life, early life. They advise me if I have an attitude of respect toward them to perceive what they feel and want for me. They accompany me to make the offering to the highest mountain to ask for rain in the fields and at harvest time. They give us hope and energy to continue our journey with courage and joy because Mother Air gives us that we or what we need to live if we work it. We know that one day we will return with them to continue being and will be at the same level of consciousness. 
In the meantime, my duty is to continue fighting and dreaming so that art, our language, and our ancient, ancient culture will one day resurface with more strength in the heart and consciousness of children and young people, nourishing the roots that give us our identity. Art is a fundamental part to express and safeguard the feelings and aspiration of our people. Well, that's the text. Thank you so much, Nicholas. If you send us the, the text, we would publish it with the webinar also. But, uh, but Robbie, we would like to see Nicholas's art, please. Thank you, Nicholas. And, uh, Thank you. What is going on? No, uh, video. Because as you see, uh, this group of amazing artists are also philosophers. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nicholas's art. If you want to comment while we see it, that's okay. Well, it's a, Go ahead. Yes, it's a celebration like uh, when I, we have a wedding in the community. We are around uh, 16 different villages in my region. All the people, speak Nahuatl. We live to, like together, like, like a family. And that is our resistance because around are the hard, hard situation. Because just uh, 12 kilometers, we, they are, there are the companies, the multinational companies, mining companies, looking for gold, and other minerals, mm -hmm. they are destroy the the environment. But this this region is more secure because we have our celebration in communities between communities. When in San Juan, like an example, San Juan de Telcingo is another village in from of my village. My village is Ameyaltepec. And then when we started with this art, like this is since we started with this, uh, like uh, I think I, it's other art, but this one is more when I have like some more uh, uh, expression when I maybe, uh, I try to make this interpretation of our celebration like this wedding what? all the people are da dancing uh, playing music and uh, well but at the same time the the our dead observing and participating in another level they are happy they are uh, well it's it's, it's, a, it's a celebration in the other level that they are with connection with us Mm -hmm. so they are smelling the food because in the kitchen, the, some people are preparing the food, like mole, like <laughs> different uh, dishes from this region. Well, every region, region has different food, different, and then uh, like a, a little difference between the languages, but not too much. All the people we understand, yes. And what more, there is a, another dancers, uh, like the dancer, the devil, devil oh, and then the, the chinelo, different dancer. Wonderful. And this one, and this uh, one. Robbie, uh -huh. keep going, sort of. Yeah, go ahead. So, yes. And this one is very different. This is just, uh, that we lived, or the, the world lived about this situation that, uh, a lot of angst, a lot of, uh, I, I am, I was uh, 
into the house because I didn't live with my mother. We were here in, at home for the COVID and, uh, but I, I don't know why I present this for me. Like uh, I, I felt this uh, connection with my people. Like I try to make when I start a work, I, I, I have a little ceremony before I start an, an artwork or to, I talk to, with them because I use, they will use me to, to make this transmission, make this message with my art to the people. Mm -hmm. and they, I was uh, looking to the news, uh, what I saw by the TV, the situation like this one in, in uh, about the George Floyd assassination, uh, assassinated with, with, by the police. Uh, the, but if you see that the nurse, the nurse is a black woman. Uh, is uh, trying to save the another uh, is uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon or going as uh, uh, who has that uh, is sick is sick uh, and but it's a, a message is a, a liberty sta statue 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 of liberty uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. state of liberty uh -huh. and then the, you you can see that. The, at the same time, the, behind the fight of the people, no, uh, looking for the the liberation, no, mm -hmm. because I, oh, because the, the, I, there are there are powers, powers, uh, so surround, no, that because uh, I think uh, who know don't know about this uh, situation, the power, the interest, very high interest, a very, uh, the, the most higher level. Mm -hmm. But the, the money is moving to this movement. That mm -hmm. there is that's a mentality in the world now. But I try to to have another vision because I have some time when my 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 mente my mentality try to have a rest. But in this situation, I was all almost all always very stresses, no, because, uh, but looking for a vision like this one, like the vulture or vulture, uh, uh -huh. uh, this one is another one. It's a celebration when, when we go to the mountain, to the highest mountain with the different dancers and uh, with people, with uh, musician and yeah. dancers and bringing food and flowers and we stay there all night and comes a thousand of people because come from different region of Guerrero of the state, uh, sometimes from another, another state and then take the food and take, take them to into the uh, bigger hall, hall in the ceremony. Thank you. Nicholas, I understand that uh, Oki Sokun is, uh, is anticipating a storm and we don't want to lose her presentation. <laughs> we have to respect the environment and the weather and the planet <laughs> as you've been teaching us. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I will ask her to be, to so we are jumping from Mexico to Canada and then we return to Red Wing. If that's okay with Red Wing, that's okay. We now give uh, the screen to Oiz Hokum because she there's a storm anticipated. <clears throat> so we don't want to lose her wisdom and gorgeous art. Thank you so much. You know, we have to do a book together. I want all of you to think about that. We really have to do a book together. You have so much, not just beauty, but so much wisdom in teaching to do. Um, 
not just because people didn't listen to you, but because so many of us do want to learn and do want to be taught. Uh, oh, we, so my dear, please. Uh, this, the floor or the screen is yours. Robbie, could you put, please put, uh, share the screen for her? Robbie? Thank you. Wonderful. That's another. I hope the participants understand what a gift, how many gifts you're getting today. <laughs> okay, I don't see uh, the Zoom yeah, screen. You have, you have the first one. Uh, it, it, where do you want to begin, with the cover or with the first image? Um, first, uh, I'd like to say, what's uh, Conorado Zewaguego? That's in, in my language. I'm sending you all greetings and uh, hopes that all is well for everyone. Um, that's my name. So uh, I would like to actually start with the first screen. Uh, not the um, intro slide, but the second one. Yes, right. Okay. So uh, I don't know if I have the ability to make it go. You can see and speak at the same time. You can look at the same screen as all of us. Okay, but I, it disappeared on me when my um, computer flashed. So oh. I'm just, I'm in search mode right now of where we are. Yeah, we are in the in the cave with the two images, the three images. We are in the first uh, image. Okay, but um, by, the, 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 by the river. Okay, uh, I think I have a little one here. Oh, good. Okay, here we go. Finally, okay. So, um. When I look to the future, I must first look into the past to understand the importance of having clear direction to imagine the future. I come from a time within my community when there was no running water, electricity, or telephone. We were living outside of Montreal. We had many tourists traveling through our community and squatting within our, our territory. Our ability to maintain our original lifestyle changed and adapted to living on reserve. Um, next. Do you want Robbie to move? Oh, here we go. Yes. Okay, I can't. Uh, ah, okay. Right. So colon colonization has uh, had a devastating outcome created by both church and state through implementation of racially motivated laws specifically created to kill the Indian to save the child through any means possible. This was enacted to suppress and eliminate what was called the Indian problem. I can attest to the fact that residential schools played a large part in the deconstruction of First Nations society and culture. I grew up on Gunawage Reserve 0700. I attended day school, which was run by the Sisters of St. Anne, where I was not allowed to speak my language and suffered inconceivable abuses. These traumas are things which are deeply rooted into our cellular memories. We can never forget or get over these. As a strong-willed child, I, attempts to colonize me were painful and in the end futile. The results of these genocidal assimilation tactics and our very survival is my primary motivation to create art to teach others about the beauty of our beliefs and why we honor our women, our mother, our mother earth, the, the men and the future children for seven generations more to come. It is why we support our environment and fiercely defend what little we have left. Um, if I put my hand up, could you change the slide, please? Robbie? Okay. Uh, yes, correct, I will. Thank okay, you. thank you. These 
truths brought forward were presented here for each individual to come to an understanding about how Indigenous peoples arrive to where we are in present day society and to come to a deeper understanding as to why we need to each listen to each other's truths and to honor them. I was fortunate to have a closely guarded secret. Our family hid behind religion so that they would not be persecuted as heathen heretics. My Dudaista, my grandmother, was a part of the underground group of knowledge keepers. And my Dudaragani, my grandfather, was a Kandol chief, a speaker of the people. Sharing tradition and culture was a natural extension of their roles. This was often shared hiding ceremony in what appeared to be social gatherings of storytelling. My elders were visionary, delving into the future. In the early 60s, I remember one night in particular sitting by a crackling fire. The elders were discussing the future. They spoke of a time when we would not hunt or fish anymore. They said we would no longer grow or trade our food or go to the river for drinking water. <clears throat> I remember my teachers, they projected one day we would capture the energy of the sun and have it within our homes. They prophesied that water would cost more than oil and no one would carry money and that their great great grandchildren would get their food by having a little card to get everything that they wanted or needed. That one day we would see and talk to each other from across town, across from our community and also we would travel across to the other side of the world. The elders prophesied a great calamity and the return of our sky world family, our ancestors. They said we would need our own languages to communicate with them. <clears throat> In those times, these stories seemed like science fiction, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So where will we be in this uncertain future? The world population today is eight and a half billion people. There are only 50,000 Mohawk people in the whole world. Our distinctive hereditary way of life is constantly challenged for its very survival. We as indigenous people have modified and adapted the evolution of our unique indigenous cultures and societies to survive within this modern world. My Duda always hoped that we would grow our gardens, collect our medicines and hunt, that we would fish and play in the same places that they did. Today, my grandchildren are learning our cultural secrets, yet I am still uncertain where my seventh gener generation family will live and work and play. I strive to see how global disclosure can continue to, uh, con can continue to contribute to evolution and recovery and sustainability of all indigenous futures based on their own cultures and knowledge keepers. Today, much of our future visions have come to pass. The list of endangered indigenous languages is bleak. The previous trends of call scholars to capture and record our history as though it exists only in the past while disavowing our oral history this has Indigenous First Nations looking ahead to maintain accuracy in recording accurate histories that utilize our own oral history, languages, and cultural practices. Securing a future for my First Nations family's seventh generation is my primary motivation for creating paintings that reflect our spirituality, that tells our history by reinforcing past knowledge while applying it into today's diverse world. We strive to create our own vision and develop a plan of action that will position ourselves, not only in existing in our diminishing indigenous spaces, but to flourish while increasing our footprint within a future one too. Cultural preservation is being placed in our hands and indigenous, other indigenous peoples throughout the world. It is imperative it is imperative that our artists, uh, knowledge keepers and leaders have the courage to document and help preserve the resources of our unique cultures.
to tell the hard truths. Each time a resourceful elder who speaks their language and practices their own culture passes into their final journey back to Skyworld, the window to enable our unique cultures to survive gets smaller. It's, um, it's really a shame in how the indigenous peoples all over the world have been placed in, in positions where they are either being attacked through genocides or through um, assimilation, forbidding uh, their peoples from doing their old ceremonies and the things that were gifted uh, to us at the time of creation and within our creation stories. And so many times I, I um, think about where we would be if we could really maintain everything that, and in the way that it was taught to me as a child, with so many uh, people that are no longer here, we are missing out on, on so much. Um, a lot of our, our indigenous culture has been taken over also by other societies and we are, are actually not always included in uh, world games that happen. For instance, with the lacrosse, as in the image you're seeing now, it's originally a, a ceremony that we had that was reflective of honoring the creator of all things. And it's also used as a medicine game uh, when the need arises within some families. But today it's an international sport um, and our people have frequently been not allowed to participate because we still see ourselves as a sovereign nation. Even though our numbers are small, we still have our language, we still have our ceremonies and our culture. As in this image, this is the nine major ceremonies that we have uh, and celebrate annually. And the, the strings that are in the middle are wampum, which are a symbol of the Iroquois Confederacy, which is bound together with 50 representatives for all of the people. Um, if you could go to the next one. We have, we have a, a still a very deep connection to the things that we don't see readily. And for example, um, people talk about spirits but they have different names for them. For us, it's our ancestors. For other people, they're ghosts or poltergeists or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. We um, still believe that we are a small part within all of creation and that the, the access to those other realms where the spiritual beings uh, still reside and are available to us is still there. We still have our ceremonies, which um, reconnect those. And we have certain societies that are just for women or and other ones that are just for men, uh, which holds the responsibility of ensuring that the gifts that were given to us in regards to ceremony are still followed and that we protect that for the future children to be able to understand and to uh, carry that forward for as many generations that we that we still can. Uh, I find it extremely hard sometimes to take a look at everything that we have lost due to colonization, reduction of our territory. At one time, all of North America belonged to the indigenous people. And now my community is two square miles, which is not big enough for 10,000 people to live in, but we manage. But we have the land base that originally supported us has been reduced to the point that we can no longer support um, the growing of food to last for many generations not on my personal reserve where I live. I, 
I have to venture out to other native reserves that have a little bit of a bigger territory so I can um, trade food for with them. Uh, it's actually really tragic that in this day and age, so much of lands that have been taken that have been uh, that have been found in favor of returning back to the people from this area uh, through the Supreme Court of Canada. They have put so many roadblocks in the way in order to get it. Like, for example, we have to have uh, a double majority vote in order to decide how we will um, disenfranchise the people who are living in our territory, which is in their own document, not allowed. And we cannot make anybody move out of the territory. Um, and we have to also decide who is gonna be responsible for maintaining that territory. It's like so futuristic that we're not allowed to, to get the land back in essence. And we're talking like a very big portion of, of um, our original territory. So yes, it's ours, but no, we can't have it, which is, it's ludicrous. Um, let's see. If you can go to the next slide down, please. Oh. <laughs> yes. So this is uh, some of our, our knowledge keepers that, um, that I have worked with in the past. And what you see on the table is our, uh, it's wampum belts, which were constructed to uh, solidify uh, treaties and agreements with each other. And we still have some of these. Most of them are in uh, museums that have them locked away, hidden away, and we have no access. And although we also uh, can recreate these, and to recreate the ones that we, we have in the past, um, the original ones, I, th I think what they believed in when they took them was that if we didn't have the wampums, we would not be able to have our governance. We would not be able to make agreements. We would forget about uh, the things then that we had worked together to solidify, which is uh, how we work internationally within all of the First Nations peoples, the indigenous peoples. So it's most of these uh, wampums are, are that um, there are a few that were made with the early colonizers, which, would, which really we're um, showing how, how we're supposed to work together. For example, the one that's most famous, which is not on, oh yes it is. It's um, right about in the middle of the table. It has three white rows and two purple rows. Uh -huh. Okay, that one represents how our governments are supposed to work with other nations. And so, each purple row runs parallel. It is their government and all their laws and our government and all our laws. Mm -hmm. And in between and, and surrounding those two is peace, power, and righteousness so that we always allow each other to have our own uh, forms of government and our own forms of, of agreements in how to work, how to trade, and and how to survive as individual uh, nations. So we still have like a lot of the information that has been passed on, but we also have lost much. I'm not sure how much, how many more generations we can still have because there are many uh, indigenous peoples within Canada who have lost their language and um, I can say for certain the Senecas who are part of the Iroquois Confederacy only have one speaker left. Uh -huh. And once that, that speaker um, leaves this earth walk, 
there will be no more Seneca speakers. And in, in my community, we work extremely hard to bring back language. We have language programs within our schools, which are exclusive to the community. Uh, other nations can't come here if they're not indigenous to learn our, our ceremonies, language and culture, which is, and our history. So we have maintained um, documents uh, and oral history from the time that the early fur trade people came here and claimed Montreal as part of their territory. So many times you will still hear that uh, in, in organizations when they're having conference, they will say, we are here in unceded Iroquois territory, which is fact and truth, but they'll never give it back and they'll never compensate us. We know that. So it's been a struggle. The whole reason of why I paint and, and do imagery that is reflecting of the culture is because we have hidden our culture for so long that there's so many of our, our own children and, and um, relations that don't really know the ceremony anymore or, or the, the way of, of life, how it used to be. And so in order to preserve the information that I have for the next seven generations, I try extremely hard to not make this flowery type of, of imagery for other people. This is for my own people. And I, at the present time, I'm working on a series that has uh, 50 images and it's uh, the, the story of Sky Woman and how she left from Sky World, came to the water world and established uh, Earth as a place for human beings. And in those the 50 pieces that are here, it talks about the way that we are supposed to carry ourselves. It talks about how we work together, how we grieve together, how we celebrate together. And each individual piece is an individual story on how it relates to us today as well. So there's probably five or six days of storytelling within the 50 pieces. <laughs> I think I think this is just of this webinar today just opened the door a little bit <laughs> because mm -hmm. each one of you is a visionary, is a missionary. <laughs> Mm. is a storyteller. <laughs> uh, if I had hats, I will take them off continuously. Uh, Thank you. And part of what you, part of what I'm hearing, you know, part of what the center does is we gave, we give the repairer awards for people who try to repair the damage done. And I think each one of you is a huge awardee. Um, I, I, Red Wing, uh, I believe it's now your time. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we've been, <laughs> you've been very patient, thank you. And I, I think, I thank your non-storm for not happening. So we have you still and please, Red Wing, your voice with us. Uh, and you have, here we go. Thank you. So we are coming back from Mexico, Canada, now back to Navajo. Okay. Uh, Red Wing Nays and she. Uh, those of you, uh, I just want to say gratitude, give my best gratitude to all of you and the people that are watching this. Uh, my name is Red Wing Nez. And I'm located down in uh, Indian Wells, Arizona. 
My age is uh, 63 years old and uh, I'm a self-taught artist. You know, I, uh, I've been doing uh, art artwork all my life. So yeah, uh, I, came, I came to share with you, um, uh, I was raised by my grandparents. Uh, little, my parents were busy down in California. Uh, my dad, uh, they're, they're on that uh, work workforce. My dad was a welder. My mom, a uh, assembly line worker. And uh, I was raised um, without electricity as a kid, um, child. Um, my grandparents were like my, more like more than my parents than my own, my own parents. Uh, kerosene lamps, batteries, radio. That was our entertainment radio and reading comics. So I really didn't have a, what young people have now. It's really different. But um, yeah, I met, you know, my grandparents were pretty, pretty, pretty good couple. They did, I think they did a good job with me. Um, we're, we're, we're sheep herders out here. Um, in, the, in the well is kind of on the reservation. It's uh, isolated. It's uh, it's government land. So what it is, we don't we don't own that land. It belongs to the government. We just use it. We're just land users. Um, my the way we made money back then. Um, my granddad was a World War II veteran, uh, military artillery artillery guy. And then uh, he received his, uh, his veteran checks every month. And then my grandmother just uh, wove, she wove rugs, like this one you see here. Yeah. And this, mm-hmm. yeah, this is a rug from my maternal grandmother. She wove that back. She, this is the kind of rug she wove. She gave this one to me for a gift when I was going out to college. But uh, yeah, that uh, we, we were sheeps. We carved the wool, we um, st- uh, dyed the wool, natural dye and then commercial dye. Uh, my job as a kid, child, was to run out the sheep, take care of the sheep, me and my uncle. We run all over the, the, uh, the mountains, the valleys, uh, take the sheep. Uh, like me, we had like 60 head of sheep and uh, 16 goats. So we had a big old herd, so we take them from, there's two water point. That's uh, about 20, 15 miles out, yeah, there's water. Uh, we don't have a lot of, back then, uh, we only had water holes. You have to take the bucket and uh, drop it in a water uh, well, take it out and then give it to the sheep, so. Uh, yeah, as though as a child, I, I just had experience where we were always on foot. Um, and uh, yeah, that uh, my paternal uh, grandmother was a traditional woman. Um, we only, she only spoke Navajo, no, no English, just a little bit, maybe a few words like uh, seven up, coke. Yeah, she could say that. Uh, she asked for a soda at the train post. She'll say, uh, get the cook chenna. Chendi ashinala, they'll say, cook chenna ashinala. So that was kind of like what she would say. Um, my paternal granddad went to Monocopi, uh Catholic school. Uh, the first schools I know um, on the Navajo reservation was uh, Catholic. So... That's where we learn how to uh, do Roman numeral and yeah. So uh, my grand, my paternal granddad was a healer, in in uh, meaning a uh, good medicine man. So any anybody that came, uh, his clients, uh, patients would come and they ask for him for prayer, healing. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll do it right in the hogan. I grew up in a hogan, small dwelling. On my dad's side, my mom's side is more like modern, modern square hogan. Um, <clears throat> my maternal grandmother um, was more Christian; she wasn't traditional. So, so as a kid, I had to 
my 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 maternal grandmother. So, sorry, <laughs> Red Wing. I would like to say to Robbie to stop showing the figures. They will come at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Go ahead, Red Wing. So sorry. Okay. Um, well, uh, I grew up with two, two, two faith kind of, just like my language. Now we're in English. So uh, my maternal grandmother uh, took walk me to church every Sunday. Now my paternal grandmother, she took me to every chain dance. So I got this uh, raised with both of them. So that, that's how um, my paternal granddad was a quiet man and a real modest, real modest guy. He didn't, he didn't really say everything up in public, but you know, he'll just stay to himself. And uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, well, we, my dad would follow welding jobs and then he'll take me along. And sometimes I couldn't go, so uh, I went to places like California, uh, Tucson, and just around, you know, Arizona. Um, so when I went to high school in Page, Arizona, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Page, but at the point was tourist is a tourist town uh, built uh, built on tourism. The Glen Canyon Dam brought tourists over. People enjoyed the lake, Lake Powell, bring the boats, fish. So, uh, sort of that's my first understanding about tourism. Uh, they want to eat. They want to stay in a restaurant and take home something. So most Navajos were silversmith, potters, rug weavers. Me, I was an artist, a painter. I turned it. So people were buying my work at a young, a very, a very early time I was selling. I still know, I still sell, make a living like that. Um, I, I like to paint. Uh, I always, my concepts were always of uh, people, uh, that I knew that had these nice trucks, you know, they'd come to the reservation and they they, 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 they would take care of their livestock with these vehicles. And uh, I was always fond of painting those trucks. And a, a lot of things I paint that are strong from the heart are the people, you know. So I've, I've done a lot of paintings as such, you know, people. Um, Ask them to show your slide. What's that? Ask them to show your, show your slide. Yeah, go ahead, show my, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there. That that's my uh, my grandmother. She's checking the sheep. She's got a hurricane lamp. And she's wondering, you know, so, so we get early lambing sometimes. We have to go out there and check on them, make sure the lambs are okay. Yeah, another. Next one. Yeah, okay. This one, um, the lambs, uh, there's lambing early and he, he built the fire and there's all four truck and the dog, sheep dogs. Uh -huh. the main, friend, main friends you have are sheep dogs where I come from, you know, but not, 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 not very many people um, live this lifestyle. Just some, there's a few out there, just like the language is going. Everything is going. There's less sheep produce. I haven't really seen a real, I see just maybe three or four people out there now um, sharing sheep. So, yeah. and this is kind of a good setting. Now, this is uh, Marvin Sito, uh, leader of the Navajo. He brought home the Navajo out of, out of um, you know, the big long walk, they call it the long walk. Uh, they, they, they run uh, 5,000 Navajos to uh, Bosque Rodondo. And they kept, up, kept, kept us up there like for four years. And then this guy's the one that uh, released. He's the one that brought us home. So uh, and, uh, this is the first painting I did of Barbin I never really paint this guy, but it was interesting. I was, I was painting him and I, I could see. Uh, what I understood about this gun, well, it wasn't his, it was Kit Carson's gun. The guy, the, 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 the guy that ran us up there, you know, in prison of Nabu. This was his gun, it was 50 cal, 50 
called they call it yellow boy. I, I don't know, they just let Barmesito, you know, like, examine or you know, show it or something. But I should understand that gun is up there, both Q or Dundo. But um, yeah, I I it is it's kind of like the aftermath peacetime. That's what this painting is about. And that behind him is window rock, yeah. And yeah, window rock. See that whole that rock. Yeah, <clears throat> window rock, Arizona. So, mm -hmm. but, yeah, <clears throat> not quite. Uh, this is just uh, kids uh, looking at petroglyph, uh, trying to figure out what you know what's written up there. What we have a lot of those petroglyphs out here. So mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, this is a homestead, you know, Hogan truck, evening set, you know, so it's, it's really nice, pleasant painting. And uh, this, this is the kind of painting uh, people like, you know, you know, people from Flagstaff, the Flagstaff from near big town, people come to eat, uh, relax, and you know, wine and dine, and then they they want to take something home of Navajo, so. <laughs> They'll pick up a small one like this, a painting. So, yeah. Wow. And yeah, this is more contemporary. Uh, I don't know where this painting is, but uh, these are all chanting. Navajo medicine man chanting. Uh, there's a time, and it's, they call it the squaw dance, but we're not supposed to use the word squaw now. So they call it the enemy way dance. This is they get together. Young now, uh, Navajo uh, medicine man, they all chant mm -hmm. and they worship and dance, yeah, into the night. So I just painted it. So they feel, they feel that movement of, you know. Yeah, we can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> and this one uh, is a Yebiche, Nightway. And they're all, they're standing in line, but, you know, you can see by over their shoulders. So that, I just came up with this one one year, you know. I really, I really like painting it. So, so I, I've done several paintings like this. So, yeah, <clears throat> contemporary. Yeah, this one too, dancing, the dancing, moving, uh, kind of a little bit of cubism, you know. Yeah. I just <clears throat> Oh, uh, or do you want to close? Yeah. What do you want to say? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you very much for putting me on this. Um, I hope uh, uh, you know wonderful, wonderful uh, pieces all of you do. Uh, the creative and what expression you have as artists. So well, I'm proud to proud of you. You know, you're different. You come from different parts of the world. And really fascinated. I just get to see it on the tube, you know, the, you know, the beautiful, beautiful land, uh, the beauty that's around us. Yeah. Uh, and even though there's political problem, even though, you know, anything, anything we have to endure. But thank you very much, you good artists out there. I know you all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm I'm most humbled. Uh, it's the only feeling I have right now. <laughs> it's a real humility and admiration. Uh, yeah. And it's and uh, I think and I was wondering uh, what were you experiencing or thinking, listening and seeing each other's work. Uh, should we start from the end to the beginning or go back to the era? <laughs> hmm. Is that a question? The era? Would you yeah. unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well. Um, I, uh, exactly. it, whichever way it goes, you know, it, 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 you know, when it comes to art, you know, with me, uh, like, okay, uh, my day is a uh, uh, very, very simple life I live now. I, I don't make my life too difficult. 
And uh, it, it's really good to get up with a hot cup of coffee and get the brain thinking, uh, what am I going to do today? Uh, you know, when I go into my studio, I got a real nice studio. My studio was a uh, sheep wool stores building, an old metal building. I used to put wool in there. I took, I work at a uh, bit of a cheap trading post now. That's where my studio is. Sounds so, like Diara can make her large pieces there. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody was there. It was really at one time it was like the Navajo Walmart. It was big, and uh, I, it, where I work is really nice. You know, you go in there, and my my wheels start turning. I know what to do. I know, so I'm very fortunate. I could do that. You know. Absolutely. And it's a job, you know, not to sell, and that's just what I work on. So if you go this way, how did you feel watching, listening and watching other people's work? What um, I found I, you? I, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it. They are. We'll go from the end to the beginning, if it's okay. Go ahead. I yeah. found that everybody's work is like so inspirational. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen a lot of different artists do work, but seeing indigenous people's works are are much much different. They are more meaningful. Uh, they're they're filled with. I see as centuries of of emotion and like real deep meaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very happy to have been on this panel as well and to have met uh, all the other uh, artists as well and to see the work that you are doing in keeping your culture alive and your, your um, really helping other people to begin to understand that we are really deeply spiritual people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Nicholas. Yes. What did you think and feel when when you saw when you met these amazing artists and their art? Well, um, the depend of our culture. No, I think our creation because everybody, well, different people uh, have another. Uh, situation, another reality or their experience like me, well, I, I would like, I imagine like Brazil, who is Brazil? The Amazon is, is, is an all our inspiration for the nature, no? And that is my, my preoccupation about the preserve, how to preserve of the that nature because it's uh, something special no? into the world. And then the other culture, like other artists, uh, well, it is inspirational because it's something like uh, it, that the art is have something very special, like different like the message, the energy, the, the, the respect to the culture, like the ceremony, like 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 uh, that's I saw now uh, is uh, something I understand that all we try to under, to interpret this uh, the experience the interior experience this connection with the spirit with the, the energies and then that's important you no know, for the people for the young people I think. Uh, they need to to have to this value of our ecology, our our tradition, our culture, our our celebration, our ceremony in the mountain. But that, that's that's my problem with me because I I see this situation because that the culture is destroyed now. Because the the influence of the the media, no, for the in the children and, and the mentality of the children, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the communities, it, because we we had that experience be, uh, before this uh, 
uh, situation uh, about the internet before we had in Mexico like a monopoly, a monopoly of the TV companies here in Mexico, very, mm -hmm. uh, no, very commercial, only commercial. And we received before this, uh, like we are living now with the internet, receive the, the shape it and other uh, like influence to our culture, like our language is destroying now, mixing more with the Spanish. The young people is using more the Spanish, the Spanish into the Nahuatl. And that's my, that I, I'm very, how I have a preoccupation, I don't know if it's the correct word, but uh, I, would, I would like to, to preserve the language. Um, well, uh, the different ceremonies because in some places we are losing this uh, celebration, uh, like in the mountain, the uh, different sacred places is not continuing. The people getting another mentality, more commercial, uh, and then the the, comp the competition with the uh, for who can have a better house, uh, a bigger car, and then, but before, when it, with my experience, what, we had another uh, mentality because we lived with more in contact with the nature. Uh, when I was walking, when I was nine years old, walking into the canyons, or to arrive to take a car for the bus to the city, three hours, and between the 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 harvest, walking, uh, uh, it was possible to to drink water in, into the hole, little hole, when you are uh, tired, make a stop and uh, relax a moment. And, and then continue to walk. And you, in that places you can have this connection, this inspiration because that's I remember. And this comes to the, my work too, but it's different now. Mm -hmm. The people, uh, we have the road now, a, a lot of cars comes to my community, uh, selling different products. But uh, the Coca Cola, the <laughs> different, like. Very bad for you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> that, that, is, that is the situation. I, for me, it's not possible to change the situation, but I try to, to save my feeling because with the, with the art. Mm -hmm. and I, I'm very political, I know, I'm very radic radical, but. But I see this situation in my region, no? and it's, it's, it's necessary for me to express that injustice is because in the we in our state, principal in our state in Guerrero is terrible the situation. The situation I know that the, the actually president of Mexico is better because he's trying to change the situation, but the other president before were terrible. They make the uh, concessiona concessiones to the greatest companies. Then, and then the people have to resist that uh, introduction of these companies. So, and that's the, the, the <laughs> we, we have that situation, but we have hope. I know our culture is very strong because we, between all these, we have a celebration. We have bigger fiestas. We continue to exchange mm -hmm. happy moments. We visit a to other, to other co communities like San Miguel Tecuisiapa, San Juan de Telcín, Guanalco, Huepa, Huelican, Xalitla, Marcela. Well, 18, 16 communities between us speaking the same language and very similar and uh, we are a family for that situation it's a little region in Guerrero where we are more safe but 
because sometimes we, we have to take a radical position too. But I know that love, love is very important to give to, and, and a positive message is, is, is something very, I, for to uh, have to another more relaxed <laughs> into this that, well, uh, I think the community, my community is, is uh, we have harmony. We don't, we don't have a bigger problem. We have our police, pol police are uh, of this region, into this region, we are very compact. The different polices from the San Juan de Tercingo, from Chalitla, from Amayaltepec, when, when he, we have a uh, difficult, all the people come together with, uh, with different instruments for to defend our, our people. So that's it, the situation. Thank you so much. And I, Diara, you were first and last. I love this. Uh, but somebody asked, actually, uh, Virginia Simmons writes, uh, it's very interesting, right before you start, she's saying, I'm wondering what Diara is thinking about how preservations will happen for her and her children and grandchildren, since she is younger than the rest and has lived in the city. So in addition to your impressions, please, <laughs> I try to think about that question. It's a great question. Thank you, Virginia. Mm. No, no, but don't change what you're <laughs> going to say first. I'm sorry. I no, just no, I'm thinking. Uh, what, were all, I, feeling, I, what were you feeling and thinking when you were, I, I will re-ask the question, sorry. Sorry, I'm just. No, it's okay. First of all, I want to, to thank very much uh, for the beautiful presentations and very emotional works mm -hmm. um, and for the sharing of all the memories, the memories of the territories and the memories of the people. Mm. I am, uh, I feel like I am uh, in a constant learning and, and, and meditation about this relation of art. Uh, because, you know, I am the elder of 10 children of, uh, of, of my father. I am the eldest daughter. And um, yeah, and uh, my youngest sister is uh, 30 years younger than me. And, um, and I remember when she was born, I told my father that I wanted her to, to have a, a different childhood, uh, different uh, from the childhood I had. Uh, and I, I, I kind of, um, I demanded it to, to, to my father. So uh, I, uh, my father as an indigenous leader, as a political leader um, in our nation, uh, he spent all my childhood away because of the indigenous movement, because he needed to, to struggle uh, for the building and recognition of the indigenous rights that we have today. And, um, and he uh, did that because um, he went to, to the, to the uh, boarding schools. Uh, he saw all the the crimes that happened during the dictatorship times. Uh, he was persecuted all his life, uh, as well as were my uncles and my grandfather. And um, and he worked so hard to to give me the opportunity to go to to the school and um, to have the. Um, tools that I that that I can have today and uh, even if it's a pen <laughs> or a brush or, or some ink uh, tools to to keep telling the stories and so I know that I am the continuity of the the teachings of my father and my grandfather and my great-grandfather and all those uh, before them and um, 
having this consciousness, uh, like I went through a, a hot uh, adolescence, uh, of course. <laughs> but when I <laughs> when I realized no, I like that I was lesson. getting uh, an adult uh, and set my feet back to the ground, uh, I realized how it was important to to collaborate to give my youngest uh, brothers and sisters um, that 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 I was really uh, missing. Uh, during my childhood and today um, my younger sister is uh, is 10 years old but uh, my other brothers and sisters are, are, are already becoming fathers and mothers and um, uh, they are they are turning into into wise adults as, as well and and beginning to to sing to their children's and and to practice uh, these paintings and and and, uh, and we had managed it in somehow uh, to 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 even uh, if we are a, 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 a bunch of kids that uh, missed uh, their father that that went uh, through um, hunger and and solitude uh, and um, and that grown uh, facing uh, the uh, racism in the daily life uh, we are really proud of who we are today and um, and we have uh, catch a part of our history uh, where well, the indigenous movement um, became organized in, in some way in front of the state, in front of the Western society, that today I believe that our uh, youth is really proud of being indigenous, you know. Uh, there are not more uh, those uh, integrationist policies um, uh, instead of that, we are turning to be part uh, of the institutions of the state. We are building politics uh, for our communities. Of course, there is always a lack of money, always a lack of everything, but we are doing what we can. And um, um, I see that in that exercise, there, there are plenty of um, uh, traps. Uh, as for example, when we go to the university, it's horrible. It's horrible. Like, uh, oh my God, uh, we should Hi. never go to the university <laughs> because uh, the, the the white people try to turn us into their thinking all the time. Like we need to to refer to them and uh, all the time uh, to the Greeks and the, the the Romans and the French and the, the Germans and, and whatever. <laughs> uh, but we have learned to insist and, and keep uh, uh, basing in, in, on our our elders and it's happening and um, uh, and in the labor work like uh, it's the same and in and in the arts is the same like uh, the art system uh, is trying all the time to to harass us into turning uh, like a contemporary artists or something uh, of their their mind uh, that is not uh, exactly um, in the logic of our cosmovisions of our, our relation to the world and and I think uh, we are in a critical moment where we have to debate uh, more wi uh, widely. Um, the importance of culture for the for the continuity of our identities and our territories and the building of the politics and um, uh, here in Brazil, well, I I am I am one of the rare ones that that choose to study art, uh, but we have a bunch of um, lawyers and anthropologists and. <laughs> uh, um, you know, the, the Amazon forest is filled with anthropologists and those are really terrific, uh, um, uh, terrifying people, actually. <laughs> and 
uh, because the anthropologists have like the, the power to define who we are. And so we have a, a new generation of indigenous anthropologists, uh, but they are really harassed all the time to, to behave as anthropologists. <laughs> and, um, and that is really dangerous because uh, the, the way that we have to learn with our grandfathers is really, is really sitting down in front of them or by, by side, them and and listening to them and not going to them as if we were that kind of scientist <laughs> because our knowledge is not made of diplomas and um and so i am uh, i uh, still uh, a little um concerned uh, in how in the future if we are uh, still going to have um medicine men, shamans, as a masters of ceremony, as we say in our nations. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of that, we are going to have lots of lawyers and lots of anthropologists. And of course, it's wonderful to have lawyers and anthropologists, uh, but we really need to, to keep going, having, uh, having our um, masters in traditional knowledge. And, um, that is something that I could understand, uh, like looking to the life of my father and my mother. And uh, today with the kind of success that is a really bittersweet success mm -hmm. uh, that we are having, uh, like calling at attention on indigenous art and indigenous contemporary art, or ho however you, you would like to call it. Um, it, it, I think it's, it's affecting uh, in a positive way uh, younger generations, uh, but we must pay attention uh, to not fall into the tricks of, um, of uh, the white people uh, again and again, uh, because it's not about the money, it's not about fame, it's not about likes on internet on, and on social media. Um, and um, there is no, no power in, in knowledge. Uh, maybe uh, what we can find is uh, um, some kind of, uh, I'm, not, I'm not finding the words even in Portuguese, um, but, you, but um, a serenity, you know, like a... a yeah, a serenity. Mm -hmm. I, I still struggle. I am I'm really impressed with the, the work uh, of Nicolas, for example, because um, I I am uh, one of those persons that I I I found really difficult to paint uh, the suffering because I am afraid of getting lost in the suffering. So I avoid to to do it. I, I prefer. I, I have chosen. Uh, by a question of mental health, of my personal mental health, um, to 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 do a study on the 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 stories of uh, my grandparents because and, and that happened in the in the middle of this uh, uh, pandemics because when I lost uh, my my grand uncle that was one of the first uh, indigenous artists in in our region I I. I cried so much and and I asked myself, oh my God, who is going to keep painting? And mm -hmm. so I began uh, keeping painting, keeping drawing. And I think that is the feeling. It's difficult to share, difficult to describe. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday I will have the, the energy or, or the peace of mind of uh, to, to share uh, the, the dark, um, and bleeding wounds that we have uh, received uh, since our birth, because it's not it's nothing uh, that we have chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if we have to share it, uh, I hope um, uh, these uh, open wounds uh, could be received with very much respect and love, uh, because. Yeah, is that we are humans and we are just part of nature. So and, and this it. is Thank exactly you. what our center is for, Diara. To help create the condition where uh, you know the Holocaust survivors used to say, if I started crying, I'd cry forever. 
If I start yeah. screaming, they're all, uh, I will destroy the world. And I, and, um, and the, you know, some of what I've learned with them is that we never cry forever and we never scream forever. And when we scream, it's a human scream. It's human size. When we experience it, it feels so big and too much. So we won't be able to contain it. But that's part of what we are here for. So I really do hope we stay together as a group and enlarge this group. So we create a, a larger, larger multiple dialogues and learn from each other. And I, I, and I hope so much that, yeah, that there will be more space to experience and express the grief that you've been talking about. I mean, just like, just only yourself, you were talking about so many losses during COVID. But we know that indigenous people suffered more from COVID than any other people. Indigenous brown and black people have lost more people than all others during COVID, which reflects so much of what we have learned to call systemic racism uh, that we can talk about forever. But I wanted to share one more extremely important thing with you. Uh, from what you describe, you were talking about the, having, uh, experiencing the creation of the world within you and your ancestors within you toward the future. It gave, and, and Diara, it gives a lot of strength when you think about how much there is in you. And I'm very glad that you, are, you made it a mission to, to study the family tree so it can be in the ground again. But in addition to the idea of doing a book together, please think about it. I mean it seriously. I don't just throw ideas. I think it could be fantastic because you have so much to offer. Uh, I don't have words to say how much you have to offer, but I want to share with you one of my missions because I believe we are all struggling with it together, which is, you know, we do have human rights and one of the rights I am focusing on now is the right of future generations. Okay, which is what you're talking about. It's, it's amazing uh, here. So I would like to, to stay in that conversation with you. Uh, what rights should they have? Of course, when a baby is born, presumably they're born into a rights-based world. Uh, okay, so you, you, you broke my heart because everybody speaks about Canada as the one that solved the problem already. And what you're saying is that they have so much more work to do. Yes, but well. Now the well, rights of future generation. It, 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 I, Go ahead. I do believe that, oh, 15 years ago or so, the United Nations had come together to talk about Indigenous peoples and rights of Indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, for all the, most of the countries have agreed that Indigenous peoples have their own, um, their own, document that should be there because they they are indigenous peoples however canada hadn't signed on mm -hmm. and even two years ago they haven't si signed on to agree 
which is really shows that when they talk about re reconciliation and when they talk about making things right, that it's really empty words. I didn't know Canada didn't sign on. Nicholas, did Mexico sign on? Did... Sorry, <laughs> you understand. Did, did Mexico sign on, uh, on for the Treaty on, on Indigenous People? Um, a tribune? It, I don't it know. was the... It was the um, longer than fifteen years ago. I actually was there, but yeah, yeah. The International uh, Human Rights Commission, yes, at the Hague, made a well, an Indian, indigenous uh, people's Indian, yeah. rights rights, and that is the one that pertains to all uh, indigenous indigenous peoples around the world. <laughs> well, uh, what about Brazil? The, the is Brazil a signatory? Yeah, yeah, I'm Brazil is. Like I, I know Mexico is as well, but, uh, but Canada, the United States, and uh, Australia doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so we have. So perhaps you know we are, we are always planning ahead. I had, and you know that August nine is the in, International Day of Indigenous Peoples. And maybe we can have a special event on just that question. The, the countries that have been signatories that, and those who haven't signed yet. So we should talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we will stay in contact. Right, we will write each other. Don't worry about translation. We'll find out the translations. <laughs> uh, I, I, the, the one question that was asked, I already uh, shared with you. Uh, it, 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 everything else in the chat box is thanking you, loving your work. Thank you for your generous, courageous, powerful stories and profoundly beautiful, deeply meaningful artworks. Uh, <laughs> Anita Sawyer says she keeps trying to leave, but it's so compelling she can't leave. <laughs> so, and we are, we are two hours. That's amazing. So, uh, but we'll continue. I, as I said, I can't thank you enough, but we simply continue. We just open the door a little bit. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I don't know. When is it your start? Thank you. Have a very good day. Thank you. Well, stay, stay well, stay well, please. Go ahead, Ayara. Annyeong, Burtia, Masson. Thank you very much, everybody. And bye-bye. See you bye -bye. next time. <laughs>